Hunter x Hunter, episode 138, request X and X wish. First of all, failed. One thing that was surprising about last episode, which makes sense thinking about it more, is that everyone knows each other. It's a very small Hunter world. Yeah, how do they expect this to ever f get finished? I mean, I bet Netero did not expect it to get finished. I bet this was the point. We're all still living in Netero's world post-death. This is the true Hunter exam. <音声><音声><音声><音声> It's funny, their only goal in this, this whole thing was not having it take a lot of time. And the inevitable result of that is it's going to take a lot of time. Hold on, is there a panda in Jinx's seat? Never flustered. The one time we saw a crack was when Jing was speaking, and even that was a half smile. Yeah, you lost. Yellow card. <笑>危険も向こうも違反とは言えないのでは前半は全面的に賛成ですが後半は耳を疑いました新前会長派の急戦法であるチードルさんの発言とは思えませんね。You you hate him, but you're following him. What does that tell you? What does the panda have to say? Ihanto ittanoa. Zen kaichoe no kei o machigatta katachi de arawaso to stay iru shito tachi e no ate kosuri desu yo. Honto no kei wa senkyo seiritsu saseru koto desu yo te message o komete ne. I mean, who knows? Maybe not. Nero probably would have loved this chaos. He's probably laughing from his bed in hell right now. But of course, that's not what Rat really cares about. Or if he does care about it, it's not how it's being applied. It's just a tool. You would dare dishonor Nero? It seems likely that everyone in this room actually really does love Netero, but that is still something that can be used as leverage. It probably works even better if that course of manipulation is based on some truth. More broadly, this is the difficulty of a lot of discourse from multiple angles. One is that there will be a consensus to a certain belief that for whatever reason, whether it was deliberately crafted or just happened because a few people really cared about it while no one else was really paying attention, or that at some point it was really important, or that it feels really good, but whatever that is, once it proliferates to a certain level, you can't question it. And then the game of people attacking you becomes painting you in the light of this thing everyone thinks is terrible. And that puts all the difficulty on the challenger because trying to go to the, the core baseline beliefs and deconstruct them and then reconstruct them is so much less powerful than the emotional weight of like, how dare you challenge this thing that we all know. Simplicity usually just carries a lot farther than nuance and emotion definitely has more pull than reason. And so when there's a lot at stake, it's a lot easier to attack people through ad hominem label than it is through carefully crafted, difficult arguments that challenge pet beliefs, which then incentivizes one to play that game. And ultimately it ends up being a race at the bottom. It's a mess. But it works. Maybe it's just because I'm older now and I've been paying more attention, but it feels like new terms are popping up all over the place. And the goal becomes not really addressing the issue or taking the highest form of the argument, but by trying to be the first to get someone into a label that spectators will all agree is terrible. Oh, slipped up a little bit there. <laughs> Couldn't hide that one. This could lead to Hunter Civil War. Which maybe is exactly what Netero wanted. So there's actually a distinction between pro Hunter and being licensed. Very fair and great. What a reasonable, non self interested guy. He's in the clear lead. He cares the most, it seems. He's been thinking about this for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah, you would expect it, it, it to come to that. Why is there a panda? Where is Jing? We know he's not in the hospital. <laughs> this look, this actual look, or I guess it's her perception, but also for real. It was not an accident. You should know the chairman well enough for that. I'm not sure what his ultimate goal was, though. As a guest, just very zoomed out. It does seem to be like he's basing it on a certain type of meritocracy towards the values that Netero treasured, which, thinking about the Hunter exam and his selection process, is not necessarily goodness. It's something like talent, but 
in a very specific or maybe general way, real life navigation in all facets. So like if the rat wins, he deserves it because he's had to go through all this and conquer this game. And if someone manages to beat the rat, then the same applies to them. I mean, you might even say the same thing about politics. What is rising to the top of politics actually a measure of? It doesn't seem like it's necessarily solely focused on things like goodness or skill. It's sort of a meta skill of navigating people, which probably stems from a certain command of resources, a deep understanding of leverage, the ability to suspend oneself enough to engage in a game that's very difficult and sometimes morally questionable. And, you know, to give it full credit and to not look at it cynically, if that's what keeps emerging time and time again, maybe that is a reflection of where people are and so therefore the way things need to progress. As much as one might imagine things being better, those imaginations may be missing a deeper understanding of unseen effects or challenges for which, like many complex things, the flaws that are obvious are actually a negative symptom them of something essential that's keeping away much worse things. It's sort of like how people want to just totally undo the financial system because the financial system has things people don't like. And it's like, yeah, I can understand your frustration and we can agree that there are things that are wrong, but it's not like these formed in a vacuum randomly once. It's like these things kept repeating across societies. And it's possible that we've just learned through our societal DNA that this is the best thing we have now given what we have now. Or it's not the best thing, but it prevents the worst thing, which is so much greater in severity than the best thing ever could be. Kind of like how at the individual level, selfishness is obviously not a desirable quality. And yet it's probably what kept the species alive to this point. Or like I had a discussion with a family member recently about food yield, food production practices and the evils therein. And that may be a great thing to be concerned about and perfectly reasonable. But at the same time, it's like, well, one of the biggest problems in human existence until practically yesterday in the scope of history was food yield. Give it a little bit of time for us to sort out the externalities. From a place of food abundance, you might miss the fact that those externalities came out of the successful pursuit of food abundance. It's obviously very complicated. It's difficult to keep track of everything, all the moving pieces. Much more complicated than I think we're comfortable dealing with typically to my previous point about issues with discourse. That's a very roundabout way to approach the, the Netero question without really even answering it, but I feel like it's somewhere in that vicinity. There's something there. Also, all this, it doesn't preclude goodness. It is possible to win and be good, but I have a feeling that someone like Netero would agree or would think that being good is somewhat meaningless if you're not winning or if you don't win. Perhaps somewhat contrary to what we saw in the resolution of the, the previous arc. You okay, Bean? <laughs> Classic maximal game, maximal challenge. A long what criteria though? I think Nero did it perfectly based on what he likes. These doors. God, this feels like a lifetime ago. Wow, is he doing the whole thing? One through five. Almost there. <laughs> He's not thinking about doors right now. It's too bad that you're seeing this side of Kluwer right now with this timing. Because you'd be proud of a lot of things he's done. You've done your homework. I hope he gets to speak to his father. That would be really interesting given their first conversation about being a Gon side. I feel like there's a lot of extra perspective on that now, given what's happened. There, speak of the devil. Speak of the exact thing. Exactly what I was hoping for. Can we catch up first? What is his pet? What are we looking at right now? Bold of you. Bold of you. So much has changed. You're not what scary. I mean, you're big, but she looks uh, all, all. She looks all right. She does not well. Mm. <laughs> the clothing was deceptive at first. Is this the same dog that was outside? Did he make it inside the house? He became an inside dog. This is kind of bizarre. I, I mean, I think Kula's not thinking super clearly. He's still. You know, but there's so much to catch up on. How did it go, Dad, at the Chimera Ant Palace? Did you know that Illumi put a pin in my head? Did you have anything to do with that? I've honored your promise up to this point. I never abandoned my friends, even though there were times where it certainly would have been understandable had I abandoned them. Look at this new power I discovered. Thank you for teaching me darts. And thank you for electric torturing me. It paid off in the end. But no, it's just straight to the sister. <laughs> yeah, this is not, yeah, this is not it. It's not the dog. <laughs> What's her name? 
There it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is honoring the promise. I made a blood oath. To you. Interesting. I would love to see more of him too. Silva also maybe can be considered top of the Nen world as it exists now, according to its current value system. People seem to really admire him. Maybe it's something like capability, the leading thing there. It's kind of shocking that Silva would treat his daughter this way. Up until now, the Zoldix have been such a loving family. They're really building this up. That dangerous, huh? It's bringing to mind the singularity concept in My Hero Academia. Like, if there's a genetic component to Nen, at a certain point, can Nen get out of control? Can you just buy that? Oh wow. Could be that. I mean, also, you grew up in this, so you take, took it for granted. Then you went outside, and you look back, and that is a way of changing the entire perspective. This is a cliche, but I've definitely experienced it. The idea that you don't really know a place until you leave it. I definitely feel that way about America. Certain things you just take for a given of life. Talking about this can be deceptive, because people are people everywhere. But because it's the differences that matter, it's the differences that we notice. And there are a lot of differences. And of course, there's some good and some bad. But I can't say with any certainty I ever would have had those thoughts had I not had some separation from it. That feels sound. Surprised out of the year award. Kalua's father. Not Gon's father. I mean, speaking of My Hero Academia, this actually might be very Shigaraki. Hide your dogs. Okay, that was abrupt. They're perfectly healthy, you know, cute. Innocent child is terrifying. <laughs> Young Lua is ready to go. They were close at one point. Thanks, Kalua, for figuring this out at the age of three. That's tough. That's really tough. She's not making it easy, she's asking a lot. There's a really easy solution for this that I think everybody would agree is the best course of action. Lock her in her bank vault. It's the only way. She's not giving it up. Whoops, we didn't know about that part. Okay. Nothing is safe in the Nen world. Wow, it wasn't just her. Oh, there it is, the darts. Future foreshadowing. <laughs> I was just, sorry, goodbye. This job, not worth it. But th what's the danger of this though? It just looks creepy, but... Creepy, but is it dangerous? Okay. Don't use the kid. Don't use the kid. There's got to be a cost to the wishes though, right? And there's got to be a danger of this form. Otherwise, you know, who cares? But people would seek her out to use her. And that could be extremely dangerous depending on the extent of what wishes she can grant. She's like the seven Dragon Balls, but like way more sinister. Genie type men. Do have a million dollar note? I was about to say, what is this? Creed one? Couldn't you give me a briefcase or something? Or like just wired it to my bank account? I gotta do this, I gotta pick all this up. Yeah, it was not exactly just greed. Oh, so it's not creation, it's like transfer. I mean, realistically, this, this Nen world has just to be absolute chaos constantly. Yeah. Mission clear. Yo, Lumi looks kind of cool. Still a jerk, though. 
<laughs> Whoops. First day on the job, type beat. I don't even know what that means. Oh, it's a death sentence. It's a death sentence. It's your spine or your life. Whatever. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> wow. But you're putting yourself at her mercy. Got it. This is how you turn your mother into an ogre. I see. The danger is in order to interact with her at all, you basically put yourself at the mercy of her requests that, I mean, I'm guessing would likely continue to scale upwards. What is Kua walking into? I wonder what, what was the last request that she fulfilled? That's sort of key, no? Good thing we have a lot of servants. And the most loved one, that's who it was. That's what it is. Yikes. A million dollars was worth 67 lives? Why hasn't she aged at all? Oh, she has aged. Okay. You are right. How's your, like, cognition without any interaction with people? Kuo cool, just planning on bearing the brunt of whatever it was before. I mean, this is literally him prepared to give his life for Gona. Well, I mean, if he dies, there's no wish. It seems like there's actually a really simple but unethical way Kuo could do this. You just put someone in there that you don't care about dying. They fail to remove their spine, a lot of people die. And then you just ask her to restore Gon. And then you send in more people that you don't care about, I guess. I see, so the whole pick me up thing was the request. And because that's sort of a light request, it reset to light demands, etc. Until, in a way, that lady asking for a million dollars, I mean, killed a lot of people, but it, it might have saved a lot of people because who, who knows? A different person might have asked to be a billionaire or something way worse. I guess, given that rationale, it's possible that she has the power to wipe out every human on the planet. Unless it's limited exclusively to the people the Asker loves. Because that would require the Asker to know them. Unless she meets Jesus or something. Aluka x Jesus is Armageddon.